Hi, good morning everyone. We proceed with the following session, which is called uh, uh, Photonics Applications. And Asir Villafranca for, from Aragon Photonics will be presenting his presentation. Asir Villafranca, CEO at uh, Aragon Photonics. And uh, we're really pleased to be here at uh, Photonic Integration Week. Thank you, Pascual, for inviting me. It's, uh, I've been wanting to come here for a few years, and finally this year it was possible. My talk uh, will not be integrated at all. In general, I'm going to speak about very large uh, infrastructures that are measured by kilometers, are not uh, nanometers, but uh, hopefully it can be interesting uh, to you to enlarge uh, your knowledge of the area, and uh, hopefully find uh, some spots where integrated photonics uh, can help uh, our endeavors. So I will speak briefly about uh, distributed fiber optic sensing technologies, uh, traditional technologies, and uh, the new uh, the new trends or the or some interesting trends that I see in the DFOS market. Uh, and then I will speak. Uh, I will sell my book and uh, speak our our history in Aragon Photonics uh, about uh, fiber sensing, uh, where we come from, what we have been doing these years, and where uh, we have now. And uh, lately, I will uh, speak about uh, some of the most interesting uh, new applications for fiber optic sensing that uh, we identify in the coming years. So uh, when we speak about uh, optical fiber, uh, by many seen as a closely to ideal medium, medium uh, with, uh, which is very stable and robust, uh, immune to electromagnetic interference, to vibrations, etc. But that's only true for certain kinds of signals. Luckily, it's, it's true for telecom signals and uh, thus the, uh, its, uh, its success. But uh, the reality is that it's not a perfect physical media at all, and there are many consequences of the variation of the environmental conditions, such as uh, temperature, strain, etc. And as uh, an old professor of uh, me uh, always said, anything that depends on a physical parameter is a sensor. So fiber is a very good sensor. And, uh, especially if we look at uh, what the nonlinear effects. Uh, those are uh, the backscatter uh, nonlinear effects are the key uh, for the fiber sensitivity to uh, temperature, strain, and fast uh, by, uh, strain changes or vibration. Okay? So depending on which of these uh, uh, phenomena they exploit, there are uh, there's several technologies but uh, most of them have in common the use of pulse light. Okay? The use of pulse light uh, to measure the, the optical fiber is, uh, is very old and very well uh, established as a way to, uh, to evaluate the attenuation of, uh, of the fibers, uh, which is uh, the OTDR. But uh, that's typically true for incoherent source, okay? where uh, the main effect that we see is just the decay of the of the attenuation and maybe some uh, some reflection by connectors etc. But uh, when we uh, use uh, more complex uh, or, uh, signals or, or more coherent uh, signals, then uh, the information that is contained in the fiber or the profile of the fiber is much much more complex, and uh, that's where uh, the dependencies on the different uh, phenomena, uh, external phenomena, uh, can have a big impact in the in the in the measurement traces and and thus uh, allow us to be able to to measure uh, very relevant parameters. And uh, the key or the greatest advantage of this kind of technology is that uh, it has it is able to measure uh, tens of kilometers. Uh, almost 100 in some, some of them, with resolutions of meters, tens of meters, something like that. So it's really a, a huge competitive advantage to use uh, point sensors or discrete uh, sensors, uh, depending on the, on the infrastructure. There are three main uh, DFOS technologies uh, that are well known, uh, each one based on a different uh, nonlinear effect. The first I want to comment is uh, Brilluan. Uh, is uh, Brilluan uh, 
the, the frequency shift of the, of the uh, Brillouin uh, backscatter depends on temperature and strain of the fiber. So uh, with these dependencies, you can do a distributed temperature and strain sensing, DTSS. Uh, some, some people forget this S, but it's uh, very important because uh, Brillouin has its uh, difficulties of measuring temperature because always temperature and strain are, are coupled. However, uh, it has a very, very uh, long reach. Brillouin is very efficient and, uh, and uh, it's uh, really accurate. But uh, measuring frequency shift is quite difficult. It's not a direct measurement. You have to do a lot of measurements, averaging, uh, weight compensation, etc. So it's slow. Typically, uh, this kind of measurement takes uh, a few minutes, depending on the, on the length of the fiber that you need to, to use. And the uh, application that this has typically been used is for structural health monitoring, okay, uh, mainly in bridges, uh, dams, and also uh, to measure uh, temperature, uh, mainly for the leak detection applications that, as we will see, is uh, one of the key, uh, or, or the, the key application that everyone in this market is after. Then we have Raman. Raman uh, depends, well, the anti Stokes component of Raman depends heavily on temperature and uh, only on temperature. So that's uh, good news in the sense that uh, measurement is much simpler and uh, is more robust for temperature only applications. However, in terms of reach, it struggles to, to deliver the same reach as the, as the BOTDA systems and also in the, the coupling, being able to measure uh, at the same time strength, uh, strain, sorry, is something that, uh, well, for some, uh, some areas can be an advantage or a disadvantage. So, for example, if here we are trying to monitor leaks, but with strain we are also able to monitor some, uh, some uh, earth movements that can uh, damage the, the, the pipe, something like that, that might offset the, uh, the problems or the, the problems of uh, having coupled uh, information or, or less accuracy in the, in the BOTDA. So the main applications for Raman is uh, fire detection, I would say, thanks to very good implementation, marketing and market blocking by, by Siemens with the fiber laser, which is a de facto standard for fire detection in tunnels. And also, uh, obviously, they always try to, uh, to have a, a significant place in uh, leak detection. Uh, when we speak about leak detection, typically uh, the detection is made is uh, gas, gas leaks are easy to, to detect because uh, the pressurized gas, uh, when, it, uh, when it goes out of the, of the tube, uh, puts the, the ground much colder. Uh, in fact, it can turn to ice, so it's a very big uh, temperature uh, gradient. And oil or the, the, the oil leaks are always uh, very, very difficult to, to detect. Typically, you need, uh, they, they, they can only be detected with one degree range or something like that, so it's much more difficult. But uh, they also try to, to sell this for, for that application. Finally, uh, Riley does. Uh, it's a bit uh, more complex. Uh, it's uh, phase-based, so uh, when we have, uh, r uh, if we can see a fiber as a, as a lot of uh, very small uh, blocks that have some reflectance, some transmission, some phase change, whatever. When uh, you have a vibration, each of these uh, small, uh, small uh, sections will have a different uh, phase shift, so the the coherent uh, interference of all that uh, of all those uh, sections within a, a pulse width will render a very uh, weird and varying uh, in distance and in time uh, trace. From that, any any uh, very very subtle change in the conditions will produce changes in a certain spot and that, uh, that uh, allows us to measure that something is changing there. As opposed to the previous two techniques that uh, were quite slow, I, I didn't mention for Raman, but it's also in the range of, uh, of minutes for, for tens of kilometers, 
uh, Riley uh, has much larger uh, power efficiency and you can have uh, significant measurements with a single pulse, whereas uh, with uh, Brilouin or Raman you, you really need to, to uh, average a lot. So you can have a very high bandwidth of the measurement. You can take measurements in the range of milliseconds and that's why uh, normally uh, this DVS which would be DVS, which would be more accurate and some use, uh, has turned marketingly to acoustic, that distributed acoustic sensing, though it doesn't really measure uh, sound. So uh, that generates much more data than, than DTSs, and that uh, is good in the sense that there is a lot of, uh, of information there, but it's also uh, much more complex to extract uh, the, the right information there. And also one of the main uh, disadvantages of traditional uh, system, uh, I say traditional, they are not uh, very old, but in the, the most of the DAS systems in the market, let's say, is that uh, as they vary in this uh, unknown and unpredictable interferometric profile of the fiber, which is not stable, uh, it's impossible or really difficult to quantify the variation. So uh, that's why uh, they end up saying this is a vibration measurement and not a fast strain measurement. So. <clears throat> this information, uh, as I say, is uh, much far more complex uh, in what uh, a DTS system would render one point. Uh, you have thousands and thousands of points in the, in the DAS system and you really need to go to, uh, to acoustic or image uh, processing or, or some of these uh, tools of advanced signal processing to be able to uh, distinguish uh, what you want. So for example, one of the mainstream applications of DAS, which is uh, third-party interference or, or TPI, uh, which is essentially uh, things that would uh, suppose uh, an a threat to, to, your, to your asset, uh, mostly for barrier assets. Okay, here we can uh, see, for example, uh, an operator with a pickaxe or, a, or, or whatever, and some machinery, and each of those will have a very different uh, profile. Okay, of course, with all of them we will see activity at that uh, part of the, of the fiber, but we really need to understand very well uh, what is the, the characteristics, the shapes, uh, of this of this signal. So, in uh, as opposed to to the previous uh, two methods that are more a measurement, these ones are really uh, something that requires far more intelligence, and uh, has also a much broader range of applications. Okay, you can use it for transport to locate uh, moving assets, to detect threats to those uh, to the infrastructure, to detect intrusion there, uh, deterioration, whatever. You can use it for perimeter security, uh, and of course uh, for valid asset protection and including uh, leaks, spills, etc. So the default uh, market uh, right now. Uh, <coughs> is uh, mainly dominated by, by Raman. Raman, as I said, has had a very good penetration as a, as a fire detector in, in tunnels, and there are a lot of uh, deployments of that. And uh, as you know, there are other uh, technologies that you can use, such as uh, brag ratings, uh, whatever. But uh, if we see and we trust uh, these uh, market uh, projections that are available from sources such as the uh, Fiber Optic Association of America, etc., uh, Rayleigh uh, Lake is the, the, the technique or the technology that has much more, uh, much higher uh, growing rate in the in the following years. And if we look at the application scenario, uh, right now uh, most of the of the applications in, in DAS, this is this is only for DAS, uh, it's oil and gas. Okay, so as I say, pipeline is the main driver of the of the of the of the market. Power cable and perimeter are other two well-established uh, solution, uh, so they have some performance issues. But uh, and we are seeing that uh, in the next uh, few years, in the next five years, uh, some applications uh, such as uh, transport monitoring or, or water distribution monitoring, seismic, will uh, will earn some some market space there. 
So what's what's new? Uh, what uh, what is what what, uh, what we can do, or what, what uh, is people trying to do uh, in the innovation of the technologies I itself? Okay, what we can improve? Uh, range is that's not time right. <laughs> range uh, is always important. Okay, uh, the, the the more the, the more range you have in your system, uh, that's uh, good for cost. The, that's always uh, room for improvement, and there is uh, Raman amplification, uh, some regeneration schemes, etc. Uh, spatial resolution can be important for a few uh, applications, but it's really difficult because these two are really, uh, I mean, it's entangled with all the, the other uh, parameters. Sensitivity would be nice, but I think it's also close to the physical limit. Uh, if that's, uh, it could help generalize the use of existing fiber, which is very important. And uh, measurement time, uh, that would be very important for DTS systems that are uh, very, very small. For, uh, for uh, that system getting linearity, being able to deliver something closer to the DTS measurement would also unlock a lot of uh, measurement. So uh, we are going to see, uh, getting to the market, dynamic uh, DTSS measurement. Uh, so there are some things published here, and I believe that uh, if uh, they reach uh, one Earth measurement for several kilometers, something like 10, that's something that uh, has been demonstrated in paper and small scale pilots. That's something that could uh, open applications in dynamic structural health monitoring that I think is not accounted for in the projections before and that could uh, push uh, brilliant DTS. And uh, well, there are obviously uh, many uh, alternative technologies for this, but they typically uh, stack at one kilometer. So I believe they are more for, for industrial fields. And quantitative dust, I think this is key. Uh, OptaSense has also identified this as, uh, as, as key. Uh, they are the only ones, uh, together with uh, our company, that provide uh, quantitative measurement. But this, this guy here is, is only reaching 10 kilometers. And uh, the idea is uh, that in a regular dust system, the same vibration intensity applied at different distances or different times will not give the same, uh, the same outcome. So it's not possible to, to measure. If we are able to do that, to measure that, that, uh, that quantification, then uh, we have what is called, uh, I mean, we, we are much closer to the applications that are right now dominated by, by DTS. So quantitative dust is uh, in fact cap capable of measuring the magnitude of the change. However, uh, it cannot keep track of the absolute value over long times. Uh, uh, so the, the profile is changing constantly through polarization, etc. So it's not possible to, to uh, preserve the, the measurement over more than a few minutes. But so that's why it's also being called lately distributed temperature gradient sensing. Okay? But many of the applications that uh, we can uh, think of are based on uh, temperature change more than on, a, on temperature, absolute temperature measurement itself. So, uh, for, for example, for leak detection with this uh, trick or this approach, uh, dust is really penetrating the, 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 the oil and gas uh, market uh, and taking it uh, from, from DTS. So now I'm going to explain a bit uh, around photonics story in fiber optic sensing. Uh, around photonics, uh, we were created in 2004, 15 years ago, and uh, first to market the BOSA, which is uh, something for telecom, but it's based on, on Brilluan. Uh, we, we, we spent the first 10 years of the company trying to, to make it profitable, and we finally did. So, uh, and uh, right now, well, we, we are still based in Spain and small, but uh, we have sales in 20 countries and have a, a solid growth in the, next, in the, in the past uh, five years that we hope will continue like that and uh, have developed a lot of uh, capabilities to, to be able to deliver the BOSA that now we are using for, for fiber sensing. We had, at some point we said, what can we also do with uh, our capabilities? And uh, fiber optic sensing was uh, an obvious choice. And uh, for that, uh, in addition to University of Zaragoza that originated the BOSA, we are now also collaborating with University of Alcalá, CSIC, and also uh, a lot of uh, companies in other, in other of our fields. So fiber optic sensing since this year is one of the three main uh, product lines that, that, that we have together with uh, solar instrumentation that I will not talk about today.
So uh, for DAS, we started to think of building a DAS in 2015, and at first uh, we did uh, some laboratory experiments, a small, a small uh, test in the university corridors, in, in some, uh, in some uh, test areas to take the prototype out, out of the lab. It was, but it was not until 2017 when we started doing pilots in real world. Uh, we started the project with uh, with a diff, uh, monitoring trains, with red electrica to monitor uh, power uh, pa underground power cable, with Indra to monitor uh, perimeters, and also with Indra to monitor. Uh, traffic in, in roads and this proved uh, the, the DAS technology proved very useful uh, and, and capable of extracting in, uh, important information there but uh, that was just a viability stage in the next two years we uh, work really hard and more than in uh, the photonic part in the in the signal processing in, in all the other layers of the solution to be able to provide uh, what the operator at the end needs which is just a small map with some alerts or some information on it or traces so we have already done that uh, for if we successfully crawled uh, an intrusive project with them uh, last year and uh, with red electrica also uh, we are starting this year the first uh, uh, permanent uh, deployments of, uh, of that system uh, in uh, several sites uh, over Spain, uh, will be five or six uh, uh, sites this year. So in this path that we were uh, focused on <laughs> to, to uh, enter the, the DAS market, at some point uh, we cross roads with, with Focus, which is uh, which was another uh, spin-off company, this time from University of Alcalá CSIC, led by Pedro Corredera, Miguel González, which you probably uh, will know, and uh, holding two key technologies, uh, Chirpulse DAS, which is a quantitative DAS technology, and Raman Range Detection. Okay, so uh, we spoke with them, we, we crossed paths, we, we agreed uh, on terms, and uh, we uh, ended up acquiring uh, the property of Focus and the, and the technologies, and uh, this last year, uh, well, it has been totally crazy, uh, pushing uh, to reindustrialize that uh, technology and launch it to the market which uh, we did officially on June uh, and uh, last year we, we already del delivered five units uh, to customers and to start uh, new and very promising uh, projects. In 2020 our plan is to incorporate uh, the advantages of uh, HDAS to our, uh, our projects and make the, the most of them and obviously open many, many uh, new projects. So, uh, well, uh, I'm going to skip the, the technical part because I think I'm lacking. So the HDAS mainly, the, well, the, the reach is quite good, 70 kilometers and very, very good uh, sensitivity. Uh, it, it is quantitative, as said, and uh, one of the key advantages over uh, the state of the art is that it provides really homogeneous performance around the fibers. So it makes it much easier to really be able to, to do the, the signal processing uh, after that. And our, our approach with this is uh, to provide an open API for application development. It's, uh, we have uh, stopped from thinking that we can deliver all kinds of solutions to uh, think on put in this tool in the hands of people that know better uh, different environments so that they can really uh, have their, their added value on each of the of the fields to be able to deliver uh, good solutions and innovative solutions to the to the market and uh, some of these uh, innovative or new uh, applications that we see are uh, in transport infrastructures, as we saw in the in the forecast. This is one of the uh, most promising uh, market trends or market areas. Okay. We can provide uh, advanced traffic metrics. Uh, with one system, you are able to see, to have a picture of all the roads at the same time. So here, for example, this is a recording of a small uh, traffic jam. Okay, we can see all the traffic at the same time the, along all the all the fiber. So. Uh, we think that's very interesting, but also with quantitative dust, we are going to be able to uh, monitor the degradation of the road and do preventive uh, maintenance, uh, saving a lot of money to the, to the operators. 
in rails, uh, also track degradation and breakdown early warning, and uh, last slide, everything that uh, is related to the, to the integrity of the tracks. That's really, really important uh, for the operators, and we are starting uh, a project about this uh, I say this year. Okay. Then uh, another area that uh, I think will see major uh, innovations in the terms of, uh, of fiber optic sensing, and I hope uh, HDAS is there to fill the, the needs, is uh, aerial uh, power cable. Okay, that uh, when the operators uh, put uh, power in the in the cable, it it gets uh, hotter, uh, it stretches, and it uh, and it goes closer to the ground. So they need to operate with a lot of uh, safety, so that uh, there's no uh, lightning, let's say, uh, from here to the ground. Uh, they operate with huge uh, safety margins, uh, being able to uh, provide monitoring so that they can uh, operate with lower safety margins. Uh, it means really a, a lot of money for, for this kind of, of companies. And obviously pipelines. Pipelines is not a new application, but uh, as I said before, I don't think the leaks, especially for oil, are well solved in the current, uh, in the current uh, uh, solutions. And I think really quantitative dust, being able to measure temperature but measuring very fast to really measure the, the gradient in terms of, of seconds will be the, the technology that consistently can deliver uh, good uh, detection uh, performance with low uh, false alarms. And also another uh, application that we see increasingly important and we'll start seeing deployment of DAS is uh, water. Okay, for, for a few years I, I thought that water wasn't worth it, uh, the, the effort of deploying new fiber, but uh, there is a trick that, uh, because when, when we speak about uh, the systems, the, the boxes themselves are cheap, but uh, if you need to install new fiber, that's really expensive, especially if you need to dig the, the hole or the trench but uh, in water, you can really put the, the cable inside. Okay? In oil and gas, you cannot do it because there are some things called pigs that uh, need to go there to, to clean. But in, in water, you can really put the, the cable inside. So it turns out to be a conduit that is already there for, for, for you to, to deploy. And even there are some people that are using them to deploy standard telecom cables. So we are probably seeing uh, cable already deployed there for, for, the, for the monitoring in some of the, of the main uh, cities around the world in their di uh, water distribution uh, systems. And finally, uh, one of the most beautiful applications, I think, is the dust for seismology. This, is, uh, this has been uh, very, uh, it has had a lot of impact uh, this year. Uh, some papers in Nature and Science uh, were, were published, uh, some of them in Nature Communications by, uh, by our partners of, uh, of Alcala and, and, and other customers uh, to be able to uh, detect uh, earthquakes and not only detect, which is the, the easy part, but really be able to, uh, to uh, map very precisely the, the subsea and the, and the faults in the, in the, down the ground that could uh, have very, very significant uh, information to be able to uh, know uh, which parts, uh, which, which areas are, are good to use and avoid some big problems such as uh, what we have here, uh, have had here in Spain here a few years ago, such as the, as the castor uh, gas deposit or things like that, to be able to avoid that, that uh, really uh, in place hundreds or thousands of millions. Yeah. This is the last slide. So uh, the outlook uh, for, for us is uh, we, we see the, the greatest opportunity in the millions of kilometers of fiber optic that is already installed at the core of critical infrastructures, data, railways, highways, pipelines, water cables, whatever. So uh, if with that or with uh, other uh, variations of DFOS technologies, we can turn them into smart infrastructures, it will be at a cost, especially at an, an, at an OPEX that has no competition with uh, conventional technologies. Questions from the audience? There any question? <coughs> uh, 
as here. First of all, congratulations. Uh, fantastic. To, I, I know you for many years, and we, I used the BOSA, and I was very impressed with that. And now seeing the fiber sensing, as uh, you said, a natural evolution is uh, it's really great. Uh, about the oil and gas market, uh, I organized a meeting at ADIPEC uh, three months ago uh, with different gas uh, companies and with a few system integrators, and the challenge for all of them was data processing. Mm -hmm. they, they said that the optics, the photonics, the fibers, the, the even the deployment for the downstreams was something solved, but it's, it's the data processing the challenge. How do you address that issue? Well, I think for sure uh, data processing is uh, where the field most needs to evolve. But uh, I also think that uh, that's, that's a regular DAS system, uh, the DAS system that most of the vendors have, uh, provides really crappy signal. It's really nonlinear. It's uh, heavily distorted, and they need to use a lot of uh, data, pro a lot of signal processing, not not even data processing, uh, raw signal processing, in order to extract something usable. For example, uh, we have seen here that uh, we uh, started doing a nonlinear DAS and uh, the edge DAS. Okay? Uh, the nonlinear DAS uh, has a simpler measurement, let's say, but requires an overhead of signal processing to be able to deliver something that you can use that really uh, you know, blocks <laughs> from, from being able to put much more uh, intelligence on, on, on that. However, whereas the, the edge DAS provides a signal that is much more uh, refined. So it provides, uh, we believe, much, uh, much pure signal that will uh, soften the, the, the need of uh, afterwards signal processing. However, I agree that uh, signal processing uh, and, and turning uh, people uh, from, from, uh, from uh, sectors that, that's uh, uh, well developed, such as uh, biomedical, uh, audio processing, uh, radar technology to this market, to see the, that this has enough potential, will really uh, be the, the leap in the next uh, three, five years. If I can ask a follow-up question. Um, one of the things that we also discussed is the use of photonic integrated circuits uh, in Aragon Photonics for different application fields. Mm -hmm. Do you have some challenges for this community? <coughs> yeah, well, um, I, I was thinking a bit about that uh, before coming here <laughs> for such an uh, off-topic talk. I, I, my, my dream of uh, integrated uh, photonic integrated circuits will, uh, is always related to the to the two neighbor laser. Okay, we, we have discussed this at some point with you, with uh, Pascual, a few years ago. But uh, I, I, I still see it uh, a bit far away. Okay, I, I, uh, if uh, integrated phot uh, photonics can provide a stable narrow line with uh, fastly tunable laser, I think that that will break uh, the market. That that will really uh, have tons of applications. Something where you can use a, a race of let's say 10, 10 uh, tunable lasers and, and have a good performance. But it's true that. These kind of applications are really, really demanding on the on the side of performance of those lasers. So I, I don't really know how how close is that dream to become uh, closer to reality. Yeah, um, I I, um, I I was missing your uh, something about the FBGs uh, in your presentation. You're you're not fo focusing on that, uh, I guess. No, uh, we believe uh, that FBGs, uh, well, uh, we, we don't have many th new things to, to add to the FBG market. Uh, there will be an FBG market, and I see and I know that there are uh, very interesting applications that uh, can be rendered out of uh, FBGs. Uh, but uh, well, we, we come from, fi from optical fiber and nonlinear effects, so this is our our thing, and where we believe really is the is, is the growth to come. But uh, FBGs, uh, I don't think they are there at all. Okay, maybe maybe we should talk. The the second thing is about the lasers. Um, we are doing integrated photonic systems and working on BOTDR, on on integrated photonics and developing the lasers for that. Okay. So maybe we can have a talk yeah, later. For sure. Okay, thank you again, Asier, for your presentation. You're welcome.